Amen. We thank God for lifting Christ up on the cross for our salvation and for our eternity with him. Let us now come to the Lord in prayer for our invocation. We give praise to your name, Father. For your name is great among us. There is no other name. That is worthy of your praise, Father. No other name that is worthy to be exalted in the earth. There is no other name, God, that we should celebrate it. And to pour out our love that is greater than human love. For you're an awesome God, you. You're almighty, but yet you're so compassionate. You're so powerful, but yet you're so merciful. You're so great, and yet you even see every one of us with the same love and passion and care and concern. So, Father, we come to sing praises to you. But you have created this world and the things in the world and they and they give you praise automatically but we come God out of choice to give you praise because not only are you worthy of it God but we recognize our human limitations and we know that if it had not been for you and the things that you have done in our lives Oh, God, receive our praise this morning as we remember the wonders of the things you do in this life. We come, God, with thanksgiving upon our hearts. We are thankful people, even from the minor to the major things that we possess. We're so thankful, Father. To be able to see a new day with new possibilities and new opportunities and new blessings and new favor. We're thankful, Father. We're thankful, Father, that we're able to be in the land of the living one more day. We're thankful, Father, for all that you have done for us to bless us with food and shelter and covering. And the protection, God, you give us, we thank you, Father. We thank you, God, that we can call on your name any time of the day. That even though trials and tribulation comes against us, even though, God, we feel so low in our spirit sometimes, but yet, God, we can call on the name of Jesus and something marvelous and mysterious happens. So, God, you are here today. We're all over the world. We're connected, God, by technology today. But yet, God, in the midst of it all, we're raising holy hands and we lift them up, holy voices, and we, we, are, we are giving you, God, the honor that you deserve this morning. Because, God, there's nobody like you. There's nobody, there's nobody like you. you. You are the only one. You are the only one. You are the supremacy of all life. And we're just thankful. We're just thankful to be alive this morning. So God, we pray for the anointing on this service. That the Holy Ghost will just come and have his way with us. Bless all over the land. Bless the people and the citizens. And Louisiana and, and all of those who are suffering from the hurricane. God, may they be able to find a thank you and a praise 
in the midst of devastation. May they be able to say, God, I may have lost everything, my house and everything in the house. And, but God, I'm still alive. And because I'm still alive, there's still possibility that I can break, get another breakthrough and come back and be able to be able to redo my life all over again. We thank you, God. The last night was not our last night. Thank you one more time. And we are excited right now. I mean, God, we are standing on tiptoe right now because we believe that a miracle is going to happen, a blessing is going to come, that some mighty for going to happen today. We believe it, Lord, because you said so, because you said so. We believe it right now. Healing can take place anywhere on the land, on this culture. Lord, we believe it right now The change can take place, that the change can fall off of our minds, God. We believe right now for the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. We believe it, Father. And so here, God, we celebrate you right now. We not, we're not going to ask you to come by here because you're already here. And just welcome us into your spirit and your presence. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah for your name. Hallelujah for this worship experience. Hallelujah, God, for your mighty blessing. You've been good to us better than we've been to ourselves. And for that we say thank you. And the church say amen. Our scripture reading for the day comes from the gospel recorded by St. Luke chapter 19. The gospel recorded by St. Luke chapter 19. We're going to be reading, begin reading from verse 1, the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead of them, climbed up a sycamore fig tree to see Jesus, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now, I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Amen. Jesus said to him, Today, this day, salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This concludes the reading of God's word, and may it bless and enrich your soul and your life. From all that dwells below the skies, let our creator praise arise. The summary of our decalogue. From all that dwells below the skies, let our creator's praise arise. Let our redeemer's name song. And he said to him, and he says to us, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. 
You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, amen. Praise God again. We so are enriched today to be in your presence and always in the presence of God. You just don't know how much of a blessing you are. And we just thank God for you and your family and that all your prayers are being answered and the favor of God is upon your life. Oh, God bless you you today we want to thank our women um, of Quinn uh, for their women's retreat on yesterday hosted by Noel Walton and Danita Moore as chairpersons it was very riveting and uh, spiritually endowed and we want to thank our guest speaker Anita Flagg for all that she poured out her soul to us on on yesterday. And then we also have uh, on the, the upcoming on Saturday, September the 12th, our Men of God Armed for Warfare retreat uh, hosted by the Men's Day Committee, Anthony Monday and Granada McNeil. Our guest speaker is uh, Brother Jesse Grissom and the time will be from 9 a.m. 11 a.m. and we're asking that you all the brothers uh, uh, will come and just join us in this spiritual retreat and I'm certainly you going to receive a feast that is just going to overflow and that you just can't get enough of it and it's going to bless your life and bless your relationship and walk with God. We want to remind everyone who's tuned in with us uh, that it is very critical that you do two things. Number one, if you have not filled out your census, um, please do so. It is critical uh, that we do so and be counted uh, as a person living in this country. So please fill out the census. Secondly, we want you to uh, go ahead and apply uh, for your application to receive uh, your mail-in ballot. Uh, you have heard what is happening with the postal services, and so we do not want to be caught in the midst of all of that. So to overcome it, we have to vote early, and that means you've got to go and apply online to ask the, or call the Board of Elections to send you your application uh, to vote, mail-in voting or absentee voting, they're all the same. Uh, so please do that uh, for your country and for yourselves and for your family. We must get out and vote. And then we just want to uh, thank all of you uh, who are partnering with us. I've, getting, I've received uh, communications from you and how we are being a blessing for you. And we thank God for that uh, all the way from California and Georgia and Illinois and uh, Michigan and Pennsylvania. I mean, all over the country, people are tuning in to our worship experience, and we thank God for that. And right now, we hope that you are having a Quinn Chapel worship experience party that you are sharing with other people uh, as we engage in this worship experience. Thank God for you, and we are praying mightily for you. And let us continue to exercise uh, the, the, the personal hygiene to help us uh, to come back this coronavirus. That is to wear your mask, wear your mask, wear your mask. And also uh, to make sure you wash your hands, uh, use sanitizer, and please practice uh, a safe distance uh, between one and another. And we're going to get to the point where we're going to get behind this and that uh, we'll look back at this and see how the Lord kept us and brought us through it. And it's going to be a celebration time 
uh, when this coronavirus is at a standstill and under control. We thank God for that. And don't forget now, take your flu shot. Please take your flu shot. Make sure you take your flu shot uh, this year. If you don't, haven't taken it before, take it this year. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. It's time now for our for intercessory prayer. I think most of us, a number of us, observed the horrifying act that occurred when Jacob Blake was shot seven times as he was going into his van with his children in the car. And we wonder how that could happen. How, how could that happen? And then while people were protesting, a young man comes from a different state with an, with an assault rifle. And then thinking he was going to protect people's property. Now, I still don't understand why property is more valuable than a life. I also don't understand how supposedly he got kudos from the police for, help, for helping them do their job. Makes me wonder what job they were doing. But you know, we're living in some challenging times. And if ever we needed the Lord, we need him right now. You know, we live in a nation that instead of operating by faith, in some cases is operating by fear. Instead of operating based on hope, they're operating with worry and anxiety. And instead of showing love, there's hate being shown. You know, and the sad thing is, it would be one thing if these United States were just divided with people that don't know God. But even people that proclaim to know Jesus are, lie, are, are in divided camps right now. You know, Jesus said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And on top of all that, I know you've got situations and circumstances you're dealing with. You've got situations and circumstances, but, but I've got good news for you. Whatever you're going through has an expiration date. Did you hear what I said? Whatever you're going through has an expiration date. It's only temporary. The way we'll get through this, though, is not with earthly wisdom, but with godly wisdom. Through patience and through prayer. You know, even though your situations have an expiration date, I've got good news for you. God's promises don't have expiration dates. For you see, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it before, he'll do it again. He parted Red Sea. He'll part your sea. So I want you to get your hearts and your minds fixed on Jesus right now. It's important that we be not like Peter who looked at Jesus and then took his eyes off and looked at the situation and started to sink. People of God, it's important that we focus all our attention, all our energy on Jesus. And then that we be not only hearers of his word, but also doers of his word. So would you now bow your hearts before the Lord as we go before the Lord in prayer? Father, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for this day, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for your mercy and your grace, Lord. And Lord God, we thank you that there's nothing too hard for you to do, Lord. Father God, you know the state of our nation, Lord. Father God, you know the divisiveness, Lord God, that's taken place, Father God. Lord God, for there are some in this country, Lord God, whose desire is, Lord God, is for this to be this United States or ununited states. But Father God, I believe that you've called this nation, Lord God, to greatness, Lord. But Lord God, it's a greatness that we've never had without somebody being oppressed, Lord. 
I believe, Lord God, that you do want this to, let, to be the land of the free, Lord, and home of the brave, Father. I believe, Father God, that as you created us, Lord God, your desire is for all men, women, boys, and girls to be equal, Lord. Therefore, Father God, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and we ask that your will be done in these United States of America, Father. That, Lord God, where there's hate, Lord God, you'll repl it'll be replaced with love. Where there are people operating out of fear, Lord God, and anxiety, Lord God, they'll operate out of hope and faith, Father. Your word says, Lord God, that judgment will begin at the house of God, Lord God. Therefore, we come now, Lord God, and we lay our hearts open to you, Father. We ask, Lord God, that you judge our sins, Lord God, and convict us of our wrongdoings, Father. We ask that you'll search our hearts, Lord, and whatever there is there, Lord God, that's not in keeping with your will, please cleanse us of it, Father, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Now, Father, we ask right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that your justice, Lord, and your mercy and your love, Lord God, will intercede into the situations in this country, Lord God. Father God, I ask, Lord God, that you will reunite your body, Father, that we'll not operate based on fear, Lord God, and doubt, Father God, but we'll operate based on your word, Father. Lord God, some of your ministers are saying, Lord God, that they choose one versus the other, Lord God, because it's the lesser of two evils, Father. There's nowhere in your word that you tell us to choose between two evils, Father. You tell us, Lord God, to choose your way, Lord God, the way, the truth, and the life, Father God. Therefore, we'll stop looking, Lord God, through our own minds and start looking through your eyes, Lord. Father God, I ask right now that your Holy Spirit will well up on the inside of us, Lord God, your spirit of wisdom and truth, Lord God, of comfort, Lord God, of power, Lord God. Lord God, let us rise up and be the people that you call us to be, Father. Now, Father God, there's some, Lord God, who stand in need, Lord God, of healing, Father God. We thank you, Father God, and we call on your name as Jehovah, Lord God, Rapha, Lord that they will be healed in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. We thank you that tumors are melting, Lord God, and, and Lord God, drying up right now in Jesus' name. We thank you that di diabetes, Lord God, and heart, Lord God, conditions, Lord God, ailments are being healed right now in Jesus' name, Father. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, where, where there is, Lord God, dissension, Lord God, and disorder, Lord God, you, Jehovah Shalom, Lord God, will bring peace into those situations. Father God, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, where there's some, Lord God, that don't have, Lord God, the needs, their needs met, Lord God, with food, Lord God, and shelter, Father. We ask, Lord God, that you'll stretch forth your hand as Jehovah Jireh, Lord, and meet their needs. For you are Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, we shall not want. Our Father, there's some, Lord God, who've suffered, Lord God, loss of loved ones, Father. We ask, Lord God, that you will comfort their hearts, Lord God, that you'll minister to them, Lord, that they'll find comfort and strength, Father God, in this time of need, Lord. Now, Father, as we come this morning, Lord God, we lift up our pastor, Lord God, Sister Jennifer, their family, Lord. We pray your richest blessings over them in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you protect them, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus over them that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. We ask, Lord, that you'll pour out a fresh anointing on our pastor, Lord, that he will preach, Lord God, with clarity, boldness, and inspiration, Lord, so that we, like Zach Zacchaeus, Lord God, will climb a tree if we need to, Lord God, to see Jesus, Lord. And when we hear his voice, Lord, we'll come down, Father. Come down from our arrogance and our pride, Lord God, and lay it all at the feet of, Lord God, our Savior, Father. Lord God, we ask that you'll give us a word, Lord God. And Father, we don't need many words, Lord God. We just need one word from you, Lord, for that word will change our lives, Lord. And the lives you change, Lord God, will change others. 
to the glory of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord. Lord God, we believe that we receive these and all other blessings in the mighty, mighty, unmatchless name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God for that wonderful, wonderful prayer of intercessory. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Sims. This morning, I have a special guest who's going to come and uh, minister to us in word today. Um, and uh, she, she comes as uh, uh, my partner, my teammate in ministry, uh, none other than uh, uh, Ms. Jennifer Wright, my wife. And we are so dedicated, and uh, she has a passion and, uh, for the Lord. She's on fire for him. And, and so we just, we just love her here at Quinn, and suddenly I love her uh, mightily. And I thank God for her. Uh, she, has, she has been a blessing to my life and to our family. And so I know you uh, say, oh. Oh, Miss Wright is going to speak today. No, she's going to minister today. Amen. 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 And after, after the next election that's going to come uh, from uh, Brother Everett Moore, uh, we'll be ready to receive. And I want you to pray for her. Please pray for her as you would pray for me. And certainly we're going to be enriched. We're going to be blessed. We're going to receive a mighty word. Uh, that we can feast upon for the rest of this week. Amen, amen. and amen. God bless. Amen. defeated cast down but not destroyed there are times when I don't understand but I still believe it's turning around for me I've had struggles and disappointments. There are times when I feel alone with some of my friends. They let me down, but I still Turning around for me, do you believe that? Around for me, just say it in your spirit. Around for me, around for me, yeah. It's turning around for me, around for me, in your home, in your car, around for me. Around for me, yeah, it's turning around for me. I've had struggles and disappointments. Seems there were times when during this COVID all alone for some of my friends. Oh, but I still believe it's turning around for me, and it will not always be like this. He will perfect that concern in me, and sooner or Favor. It's turning around for me. 
and it won't always be like this. He will perfect that concern in you. Sooner or later, it will turn in your face. around for me around for me around for me yeah it's turning around for me and it won't always be like this God will perfect that concern or later it will turn in your favor or later it will turn in your favor sooner or later it will turn in your favor it's turning around for me Won't he turn it around? Won't he turn it around? I have a friend that says, won't he do it? To Reverend Pastor Wright, my husband, my beloved husband this morning, and to Reverend Sims, prayer warrior, to Brother Everett and the musicians, and all of those who are in the Quinn family and those who are listening on social media greet you this morning in the precious name of Jesus and what a beautiful, beautiful morning it truly is. Amen. I thank God for this opportunity for a new day. Yeah. For a new day, you just never know what the Lord's going to do. Amen. If you have your Bible, there is a passage of scripture found in the book of Luke, chapter 19, that was read this morning. And I'd like to just read it one more time before I begin, so we can have it in our spirits. Amen. Luke, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich, and he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see Jesus, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today. I must stay at your house. I'm out. I'm out. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Yes. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give, all of my, I give half of my goods to the poor. Yes. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore it fourfold. Yes. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house, yes. because he is also a son of Abraham. Yes. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Thank May you. we pray. We thank you, Lord, for your word. It meets us where we are and takes us where we need to go. We thank you this morning for your word. 
We pray that your message will go out and someone, somewhere, will be saved and changed and in, encouraged this morning to run on the rest of the week. These prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The 19th chapter of the book of Luke begins with a very heartwarming story. The narrative begins with Jesus entering Jericho, and then Jesus begins to pass through Jericho. Verse 2 tells us about a man named Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector. His occupation wasn't very much respected or revered in those times. In biblical times, tax collectors were not very popular at all. Yeah. The Bible also says that Zacchaeus was rich. Yeah. Yeah. He was also a curious man, mm -hmm. and he was a man who didn't know Jesus. Well, Let's look at Zacchaeus this morning and learn about a man who met Jesus in a very unconventional way. Yeah. Verse 3 tells us again, and he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd for he was of short stature. Nugget one, a golden nugget that we can see from this story and just in verse three is anytime we are around a crowd of people, we have to have a made up mind on what we're going to do. We must keep our mind on Jesus. Amen. Now we don't know what the crowd says to Zacchaeus, it's not recorded, but you know how people can be. Zacchaeus, you, you, you need to stay away, mind your business. Uh, use mind over matter. No, you, you, you don't have to come to see Jesus. Someone may have told him, I've had you on my mind and you just need to stay away. Someone may have said, maybe he's lost his mind. And someone may have said, just mind your manners. Yeah. And today we say things about the mind. We say, get your education because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Yeah. But Zacchaeus could not be deterred. He could not be turned around because he had a made-up mind. Yeah. What does God's word say about our mind? Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Isaiah 26.3 says, He will keep you in perfect peace, right. whose mind is stayed on him. Yeah. Luke 12.29 says, Don't seek so much what you eat or what you drink. But Jesus says in Luke 12.29, don't have an anxious mind. And 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, right. but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah, yeah. During these times that we're living in, and people are going here and there, and crowds are here and there, we have to remember that we must stay informed, but keep our mind on God's word and his promises. Amen. There's a song that says, I woke up this morning with the Lord, stayed on my mind. Don't let anyone or anything keep you from accepting or serving Christ. Protect your mind. Remember the woman with the issue of blood? She had to press in. She had a made up mind because she wanted to see Jesus. Verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see Jesus for he was going to pass that way. Another golden nugget. Always remember Jesus has your plans in mind. We may think we have a plan A or a plan B to do something, but there are 26 letters in the alphabet, and if plan A doesn't work, we have to move on to plan B like Zacchaeus did when he ran and climbed up the tree. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He knows what we need. He has the provisions, the plans, the answers, and the openings you need for exactly the things that you need them for. Zacchaeus found a sycamore tree. There were other people that had to climb in to see Jesus also. In the book of Mark, there were four men who took uh, a man who had a need, and they climbed up on a roof, tore it off, because they needed to see Jesus. We must stay alert and focused in our times of need, because we don't know how the Lord will move. And if we try this or that or this or that and still feel frustrated, we must do the obvious, like Zacchaeus did. He just climbed a tree because the tree was there, but Jesus had that tree there waiting for Zacchaeus. Now, we can't climb trees and climb roofs and tear off things like they did in the Bible, but we can climb and get into God's word 
We can climb in the word of God because our answers are all there. Now, we don't need crystal balls, a rabbit foot, lucky charms, psychic readers. They aren't there. The answer's not there. I can tell you this morning they're not there. Jesus Christ is the answer. It's Jesus Christ. The Bible will tell us what to do when we read his word. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 says, See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. We know what to do. We know we have to love one another. It's the only way. Verse 16 says, Rejoice always. We have to rejoice. Verse 17 says, Pray. Pray without ceasing. We have to pray. And verse 18 says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What's the will of God today? The will of God is to give thanks. Be grateful. Be grateful to the Lord. Now you might be wondering, well, it's kind of hard to do all those things in the times we're living in. Well, Jesus says you can't do it alone. But he says you can do all things through him. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Jesus will help you to do it. Verse 5, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Verse 5, what can we learn? Jesus sees us before we see him. Oh, he knows where we are. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus knows about us. He knows about us. He loved us so that we could love him. In our story this morning, Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree to see Jesus, but in that big tree with many, many leaves, Jesus lets Zacchaeus know that he's not hidden at all. Jesus acknowledges him by calling him by name and telling him to come down quickly because Jesus is coming to his house. We are known by Jesus too. Oh, yes, we are. He knows everything about us, and he deeply loves us. He told Zacchaeus he would stay at his house, and when we open our hearts to receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, He comes into our lives and into our hearts. There's a saying that says, even though there are millions down on bended knee, but even among the millions, Jesus still can hear and see me. He knows the number of freckles on your nose. He knows the number of hairs on your head. Jesus, our Savior. One would think that all went well with Zacchaeus after his experience with trying to see Jesus. Because, in fact, he did what he could. He ran ahead of the crowd. He climbed a tree. He hid behind some leaves, if you will, and he was secretly looking at Jesus. But that's not how the story ends, no. The crowd pulls a a, a flipping of the script, as the young people say. The crowd starts to stir up trouble, complaining, not about Zacchaeus, now about Jesus. When they saw it, they they all complained, saying, Jesus has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. But it's too late. The transformation has already been activated. Zacchaeus stood up and said, not to the crowd, but he speaks to Jesus. He says, look, Lord, if I have, if I He says, look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anybody by false accusation, I will restore it fourfold. You are never the same after you've been in the company of Jesus. You are never, ever the same. Now, Jesus has the last word. Jesus then says to Zacchaeus and all those who are around, today salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That includes me and that includes you. Here's a summary of the story. Ignore the crowd. Keep your mind on Jesus. Do your own thinking. Do your own thinking. 
Jesus has a plan for you. When your plan B doesn't work, let Jesus work all the other letters in the alphabet. And I can tell you this right, right now, it won't take long. Amen. Jesus sees us before we see him. And my next point is, it's time to get saved. It's time to get saved. Bye -bye. Jesus has the last word. Mm -hmm. I know what you're thinking. Well, Jennifer, what a good, good little story that was. And what about today and all the things that are going on? I want to close with a couple of words, and then I'm going to go sit down. The Lord will make a way somehow. If you can't see and you have an eye concerns and the doctor has to go in and replace your knee, keep praying, keep your mind on Jesus. When you're broke and maybe your son starts to smoke, keep your eye on Jesus. He'll guide you through. If you miss a loved one and to them you want to cleave. Or when your husband says or your wife says they're going to leave. Keep everything in front of Jesus. He'll see you through. Keep your mind on Jesus. If you have to bury your mom or bury your dad or bury your grandchild, Jesus is there with you. Jesus is there with you. When grandma has concerns about her chest, and maybe grandma's concerned about diabetes or dementia and all the rest. Pray with your grandma. Help her in the end to keep her eyes on Jesus. When they act up on your job and thieves break in and rob, keep your eyes on Jesus. When the bill money is short and there's no money to buy food to put on the fork, keep your eyes on Jesus. When college tuition goes up, and you don't have veterinarian money for your cat or your pup. Keep your eyes. Keep your eyes on Jesus. If Medicare doesn't cover it all, or if you slip and you break a hip and you can't get up from your falls, keep your eye on Jesus. When scammers get on the phone and creditors call you to take a payday loan, let the Lord provide. Keep your eyes on Jesus. If the fridge, the stove, and the furnace all go out, some of the kids are acting up and everybody wants to pout, pray over them. Keep your eyes on Jesus. When your money is funny and just not enough, living without a couch, a chair, or other stuff, keep your eyes on Jesus. He will see you through. When you're old and maybe a little slow and up in age and someone has to help you walk or turn a page, Keep your eyes on Jesus. He'll see you through. If you feel overwhelmed, stressed, and about to quit, it's then that you have to hit your knees and get a Jesus lift. We have to hang on, hang tight, bunker down till we hear the voice of the master's sound. It's then at this moment we know for sure. This life we live, it's not the movies, a joke, or a Hollywood tour. Jesus will get us safely to the other side, and until then, we have to pray, praise him, and enjoy the ride. Well, Jennifer, what you saying through all of this? Keep your mind on Jesus, because the Bible says it best. Saints, he will keep your mind in perfect wow. peace. If you keep your mind stayed on Jesus, during the week, wear your mask, stay your distance, wash your hand. But I want to add two more that start with a W. Stay in the word and worship him. Whoa. Worship him and he will see you through. Jesus, Jesus, how sweet the name. Thank you. My, my, isn't that a word that we can take with us for the rest of the week and the rest of our lives? Keep our minds on Jesus. And if you are out there listening to us today, I looked and I observed the 
beautiful houses in California consumed by fire, smoldering, and smoke and ashes. All of those wonderful things they had in their homes are now just ashes. And then Louisiana, where the floods had come and the wind was so strong and knocking and toppling over homes and buildings and knocking out windows and destroying property. The insight is stuff will leave us. They will only last temporarily. But if we keep our minds on Jesus, Amen. he will never leave us. Yes. And you will need him every day Amen. of your life. So I invite you to ask him to come into your life, into your heart, into your mind, into your human spirit. Let him guide you, counsel you, be with you. And lead you to glory once this life is over. And if you need counseling and need and say, well, I'm, I want him, but I don't know what to do. I tell you, call 513-825-4900. We will lead you to Christ because he is looking and waiting for you right now. As a matter of fact, bow down on your knees and in your heart. If you can't bow on your knees, just bow in your heart and say, Jesus, I confess my sins to you. Jesus, I come to you because I want you in my life. Jesus, forgive me of every wrong that I've done. Jesus, I just pour out my soul to you. I confess that you died for my sins. You have cleansed me from my sins and I receive that in my spirit. I know that I'm not all that I should be. But God, if you just come and just help me, I can be a better person. So God, I surrender myself into your hands. Now, my beloved, if you say that in your spirit, you're going to need an escort to help you to walk forward with Christ. So contact us. So we can become that escort for you to teach you and guide you the words of Christ and show you how you can rise up and be that person that God has intended for you to become. So we thank you today in the name of Jesus. We give praise to Sister Jennifer Wright for that marvelous message today. You can clap hands and give praise wherever you are thank God for her amen that God will continue to use her and, and that he will get the glory from us from her amen we thank God for all of you our media team our musicians our director our, our, my co-partner now in, in this COVID Reverend Sims who's been a mainstay for me in this pulpit and we just thank all of you. May God bless you real good this week. Now expect a miracle. Expect a change. Expect a blessing. Expect a great favor in your life. Live in expectancy this week and see what God would do for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This now concludes our worship experience on this. Uh, may God bless you real good. Amen. And amen, and amen.